Sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And you pronounce my name really well, which is quite unusual. Thank you. <laughs> um, benefits, you know, that portability, the attractiveness, 
and, and the actual, you know, what we're seeing there, whether it was supplementary, there's, it's not concerned, it's perceived as an academic activity. So, how does that tally up? Well, a lot of that, of the research that's been carried out on podcasting, has been done through um, teachers putting materials on VLEs for their students to listen to. Um, and then they may have some activities based on it. Now, if I'm a student and I'm told to go to a VLE and then I have some activities to do afterwards, why on earth would I download the podcast, transfer it to my mobile device, or access it directly to my mobile device, but then go and listen to it on the bus and then come back to the VLE to do the activities? Um, well, of course, you're going to see a lot of, uh, not a lot of, um, transfer to mobile devices. And of course it's going to be perceived as an academic activity because my lecturer has told me to do it. So it's not kind of, and it's very, you know, knowledge transfer, you know, I'm telling you this. Um, so it's not a lot of integrating it into your own personal learning, into your independent learning. And I just thought, I don't believe any of this. I, I don't believe that people really are using it like that alone. Now, iTunes U came along in 2007, you have a chronology of things, you know, how it expanded through different territories. Uh, in 2010, they announced 300 million downloads. Last year, they said, I think it was 600. Um, very, very, very popular. When, I, when iTunes, when Oxford launched their own iTunes U site, they had 60,000 downloads just in the first week. At uh, the Open University, um, we've had over 50 million downloads since 2008. Um, and as you can, I don't know if, how well you can see that. Uh, basically, this is the trend, 2008, the end of 2011, how exponentially it's grown so much. Um, a quarter of the people who download our resources are from the United States, UK, Canada, China, Australia, Germany, Japan, and North America. But they include the Netherlands and Spain, France. Um, so this is funny for us because obviously the OU is well known in the UK, somewhat known in Europe, unknown in the territories where most people are downloading from. So this is to us it's saying, wow, okay, yeah, there's a whole new audience that for us. Um, the Department of Languages at the OU has 11 collections of, um, of materials, actually maybe 12 now. Um, out of the 392 collections that the OU provides, we've had over 15 million, well, as of the beginning of uh, this year, um, we, uh, we had over 15 million downloads. So even though we are only about 10% of the material that we upload, languages represent only 10% of the material that the OU uploads to iTunes U, nearly a quarter of the downloads actually are for languages, which means that languages is the most popular subject that users of iTunes U at, uh, from our university, but not from OU materials from the other university, um, is, is the most popular subject. In fact, if you look at this, this screen grab I, I took in June, um, that is the chart for languages in general, not for all your languages, and the top 10 was taken up by Open University Resources. But I'm not here to, to tell you about how wonderful we are. Um, I'm, tell you about, I'm going to tell you about what we don't know. So, yeah, we upload all these resources, we can see huge numbers of la downloads that we wouldn't have imagined. But we are teaching strangers. We have no idea who's listening. We don't know what they do with what they download, and we don't know what they think about it. So, I did a, a survey which was linked to from uh, the iTunes U pages, and it ran uh, from August 2009 to April 11. Um, I'm going to skip the rest. You know, but basically, over 2,000 responses were collected, and of those, 465 were from people who use languages material, of which 10 were people who use it for teaching, so I took them out of the um, number crunching, and 455 was the actual number of language learners. So the results give us a profile of the language um, of you know, people who use languages as the OU materials, why, the, you know, how they use them, why, 
they're interested in them, what their listening habits are, how they rate them, and comparison with non-language learners. So, here comes the interactive part. Now, you're all teachers, you're all used to asking your students for things, and you are met with stony silence. So I'm going to ask you a question, and I hope that I'm not going to be met with stony silence. So, based on what I've just told you, you know, users of podcasts, independent users of podcasts, they are not our own students, they are people in the wide world. Just intuitive guesses. Um, male or female? Female. 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 Age? Teenagers. Teenagers. Forty oh, oh, up. Forty up. Okay, no, it's mixed view, that's fine, that's fine. Um, where are they from? Are they UK based? Do you think because after the answer to that? All you students, do you think we get mostly our own students who download our our, our stuff? No. no. no? Why do you think they're interested in the OU resources? Do you think it's for their studies, for their work, or for personal interest? Personal, personal interest. Do you think they actually listen to anything they download? No. 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 <laughs> do you think they actually transfer to a mobile device and actually listen on the go? No. No. Some couple of yeses. Do you think they'll rate the materials okay? Yeah. yeah. They like them? Let's find out. Um, I was really surprised about this. 52% male. Now, considering... Um, so, there were fewer males <coughs> among the language learners, and anyone can tell you that, language learners, mostly females at the university, another, and many other times, um, language teachers, mostly females. <laughs> um, so the non-language users actually had a bigger percentage of males, but still, for a language activity to have a majority of males is almost unheard of. Um, you know, usually language students is 70% female. So of course you're going with the. See, I was torn here before I got the results because I thought, oh, you think of techie stuff, men, language stuff, women. Which one will it be? Sorry for the generalization. Um, which one will it be? So I was really surprised about this. Um, and their age, the teenagers barely registered. Under 15 to over 65 here, and you can see that 25 to 64 is really the, the big uh, proportion of students, which is quite very evenly split. So I was quite surprised about that. I, was, I actually thought it was going to be completely opposite. I thought it was going to be either the teenagers or the people who have retired and have time to go browsing and whatever. And I was so wrong. Um, now, this is interesting. The language learners, now, the UK context, language learning, ha 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 ha. You know, UK students are notorious, the, well, British, are, the Brits are notorious for not thinking they need to study languages. So, people who download resources from the OU, in general, come from the USA, then Europe, except the, the UK, then the UK. For lang for, sorry, I've just done this completely around, I? The non-language learners is UK, US, Europe. The language learners, of course, the UK drops to third, and then it's the US, and Europe, in the US, is much more of a culture of learning languages. So I thought it was really interesting that there is such a marked difference between subjects. Um, our non-language material attracts a lot more, 20% of our own students at the OU, the language materials attracts a lot, of, the proportion is much smaller. Um, we do, basically, people look for language learning resources on iTunes U, they find us and they use it. Um, why are you interested in the resources? Uh, relevant to their job? Me. Less than 10%. Relevant to their studies? Me. Over, just over 10%. Personal interest. So basically, what this is telling us is it's not people who are formally studying languages, people have just got an interest in languages. I think languages is perceived <coughs> as an activity that you don't necessarily need tuition for.
for, you know, you can go to a country and learn it, you can listen to materials and you learn from it. So, in a way, it, it's very good for us because people have got that notion that, you know, languages is something that you can learn by listening to type of language materials, teaching materials. Not so good for our profession because we want to teach them and we want them to enroll in things and we, <laughs> it's our business to have language students. But obviously it's seen as a, an independent learning tool for language learning. Now, I was, <coughs> now how many have you downloaded? 1 to 10, up to 25, up to 50, over 50. So obviously people you know, download a reasonable number. And quite a few people listen to 100% of the materials they download, so, which I was completely amazed about. I must download God knows how many podcasts and I must listen to 10% of what I download. I don't know if I read them. Um, so I was quite surprised. And of course, they've listened to none. Yes, all good intentions, but not actually listen. Um, that happens too. Is what, what kind of surprise <coughs> to you more about technology? Do you transfer to a mobile device? Always, most of the time, sometimes, yes. And I was so pleased about this. You know, all the literature points to students not transferring to mobile devices, so they do transfer. Uh, that, I mean, there's a caveat with this, because um, when I launched the survey, iTunes U wasn't on iOS as something that you could download directly to a mobile device. So I said transfer to a mobile device. Nowadays, obviously, with your iPhones, etc., you can download directly to your, to your mobile device. So, but it does say, you know, where do you actually listen? On a portable device, on a laptop, on a desktop computer. So people are listening on the go. Um, how do they rate them? Um, very positively, you know. 80% in good or very good, okay, not so good, terrible, terrible, the not so good and terrible, it's quite nice that nobody thought it was terrible, <laughs> and really 0.9%, I can cope with 0.9%, I think um, the quality is not so good. Funnily enough, they were all men, what's with that? I don't know, I don't know. Do they think they're learning? Yes, yeah, uh, they considered listening to the language learning podcast as a learning activity. They, there was a control question as well, and it came up with a very similar number. They do see listening to independent language learning materials as improving their knowledge of the subject as learning. So what does that tell us? You know, should we start thinking about how we use iTunes U um, as our main teaching delivery medium. Um, you know, with high fees and um, more and more uh, universities looking for more and more ways of um, increasing revenue through other um, other medium uh, medium media. <laughs> um, it was really interesting that half the respondents actually would consider paying for for the download, I, I honestly thought it would be about 5%. Because um, people don't pay for things. People don't want to pay for things. You know, non resources, you know, apps, people will download the free version. You know, even if it's 79p, they go, no, 79p for an app. Um, so I was really, really surprised about this. Um, and an astonishing 68% would be interested in taking some form of, assess of assessment based on what they've used that led to some kind of, maybe not qualification, but some kind of certification of yes, I've done this many hours of study, and here's a piece of paper that proves it. Um, which again, you know, I was really, really surprised at that. Um, so maybe when we think about, um, when this is not the research part, but um, when we're thinking about our delivery of courses, our fees, etc. maybe there's some money to be made there. Um, although, of course, then there's the whole issue of, as educators should be, the whole point of IT is to provide free access to education materials. So, 
this is the talk to your managers bit. And then if you have a conscience as, a, as an educator, then you say, no, we must provide free material. But you can have that whole discussion in your head. <laughs> um, so what? Well, this is the first ever large-scale study of iTunes U learners, and the whole point of it is that I think it personalizes the learner. You know, you put materials out there, open educational resources, podcasts, etc., and, 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 and you don't know who's accessing it. Accessing it. Um, so we've learned something about the type of user, what they do, and, and what they think. And what they do is, is some of it is expected, some of it, some of it was very surprising, but what's important is we have some knowledge of who these people are, what they do. And if you know your audience, you can make informed decisions. So for example, a lot of researchers were saying, well hang on, if people don't transfer <coughs> the resources to a mobile device, why should we try to design <coughs> stuff that can be read on a, on a screen this big, if in fact people are looking at the screen this big. But now that we know that actually a lot of people do transfer to a mobile device, yes, it's actually worth designing for a mobile device as opposed to designing for a big screen. Um, you can make decisions about your delivery strategy. You know that people will use it, that they see the benefit in it, that they think they're learning. We need a lot more research, I think, on this. We need to see, well, you know, people think they're learning, that's very positive, but it's self-reported. Um, can we look at actual learning outcomes? Can we measure results and an improvement? Um, how they engage with the content? Um, and aside from research, you know, can it lead to enrollment? Um, and you knew it hasn't at all, you know. 50 million people downloading our resources, a negligible percentage actually then choose to sign up for our courses. So it's great, I mean, it's great for the brand. You know, the OU is unknown in the US and there's millions and millions of people downloading stuff on the OU. The same thing can happen with your tradition. Oxford and Cambridge are huge in the US. Uh, although the OU is bigger. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, but Oxford and Cambridge are very well known in the States. You know, is this, this could be a really good thing for your institution. Um, and exploring new revenue generation, as I um, mentioned before. Um, that's me. Muchas gracias. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead. Literally, they just go into, you know, if someone's giving a lecture, they literally go in with a digital recorder, they plonk it on the table, at the end of the, the lecture they pick it up, they chop the, the, you know, the beginning and ending, and up it goes. We tend to produce more materials that are more targeted, more, so there's a lot of um, variety, and all of it is fine. You know, some people like the one hour long lecture, some people prefer the 10 minute chunk that they can listen to on the bus kind of thing. So, um, but if you contact um, iTunes, you at Apple, 
uh, and they actually have a button on their website that you can click on and, and that gets you going. Um, they are actually very keen for you to do it, and they will help you. Um, you obviously have to have a, the right uh, tools, but it's nothing major. You can just produce it as an MP3, and off it goes. You need to think about your labeling, um, the metadata that goes with your description, the um, titling, the image that goes with each collection. Um, but it's less time consuming than you may think. Um, you also need to think about is a certain faculty doing it, or is there going to be a, a strategic university decision that, yes, the University of Southampton is going to do that, and every faculty should be doing blah, blah, blah. You know, the, you make the decision that, yeah, to go as a university and but obviously we had a huge bank of materials because the audio has been produced in like, you know, distance learning materials for 40 years. So we had old television programs, you know, we, we produced audio for our students, we produced video for our students. So it was all relatively easy for us to have a huge bank and put it on. But yeah, I mean, then we can talk outside of you and the audience as well. It's not, you know, it's like, oh, I choose you. Um, you know, they're going to be, it has to be excellent. I get to differ. I've listened to materials from several well-known entities, <laughs> which I have my own doubts about the pedagogic thinking behind it, and that's that's also important. You know, that, that you have um, someone was saying on the back chat in France, and the painter is saying, you know, um, you know, the pedagogic has to be sorted out. You, know, you have to know why you're doing what for to then have a coherent. Thank you very much. Yes. You said in your talk that um, even though there were so many downloads, there wasn't much of an increase of people who actually signed up for courses. I, I have in the back of my mind a study conducted by the OB, which said since we have all these open educational resources freely available, that there was an increase mm. of Yes, um, our online materials, our websites, um, OpenLearn, which is our big try our courses online, that draws in a lot of students. I do it doesn't. But uh, yeah, all our websites are free courses, free content, and if, if you ever want to know something about geology or astronomy or whatever, do look at OpenLearn uh, or learn. Um, but open, if you Google open there, and you'll find that a lot of our courses are actually have got a lot of free access, um, and you can, you can find it there. Thank you very much. The, 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 the background is, of course, that there are still quite a few language teachers who say, if I took my material online, why would, why would students come to my class? I know. <laughs> and then I always say, no, 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 this is I not know. what's going to happen. You might. It's, it's a PR, what you're doing for It's not only PR, actually. People are learning from it. And I think um, there's a lot to be said for, um, you know, say for an advanced conversation class, you could get students to listen to a 10-minute authentic piece of news from the target language uh, on media channels. And, and then they come to class having already listened to it, and you can engage directly in, in, in the discussing of it. Um, and you can motivate a lot of people to use their spare time for a language learning activity which is not threatening. It's not no one's going to ask me about it afterwards. I'm just letting it wash over me, and maybe I'll pick up some pronunciation, I'll pick up some vocabulary um, as an independent learning tool. So, but yes, people get very funny about it, but I may have said something wrong, and people will know in the whole world. Personally, I, I don't care. You know, I, it's like, yes, get over it. You know, this is the world of Facebook and Twitter. If you trip over in class, someone probably has filmed it and put it on YouTube. You know, <laughs> you're, as a, as a public speaker, you are exposed to these things uh, and, and more and more with technology. So, you know, lose the fear. Thank you. Uh, what kind of material is what you put in the iTunes U? Uh, what is the most common material that I should have started there, shouldn't I? Um, can we? Yes. 
if, I don't know if I can just install them. They, and I really should have been clever enough to ask, oh, can you install it? Whatever. You're looking for iTunes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, we have a lot of video that we film uh, on location, so for German, Spanish, Italian. Ah, you see, I could start with all this, couldn't I? We have. <laughs> We, at the OU of Beginners, we teach Chinese, Welsh, um, French, Spanish, Italian, German, and something else. Is there seven Welsh. classes over there? Welsh? Yes. Did I say Welsh in my Yeah. That's my word. Um, so we have. Um, I'm not trying to show you, but I can show you if you want. But um, basically, we have audio material and video material um, that we recorded originally for our courses and then we've uploaded for free here. So it's, it's kind of short documentaries, interviews with people going to a new place. Um, you get from the basics of um, how to ask in French for the station or to order a meal or whatever to in depth interviews with a film director who's talking about the film or we're going to see an old town in Spain or a thing of, uh, you know, a visit to Peru and what they saw, there's a Quechua wedding and, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of, of materials that we've recorded as part of the delivery of our courses and then we've, we've put online. So, depending on the level, depending on the language, there's more materials and less. Some is audio, some is video. Everything comes with transcripts um, so people can read as well as they Listen or watch. And do you design uh, um, the proper activities so the learners can work with them? No. That's, that's um, this is just do what you want with it. Uh, okay. And we encourage teachers to use them uh, as well. It, you know, by all means, go and use those videos in your teaching. Ask people, go and watch this, and then we'll hear okay, our yeah, questions, yeah. hear okay. the discussion, whatever. So feel free to download the news, of course. Okay. Question. Um, I just have a few bits of information to give you. Uh, but first of all, thank you again, Fernando, 